very challenging game. Always felt as though, you know, these games against Tampa, I've played them numerous times, of course, in the past, uh, are always very, very competitive. Neil's got them set up terrifically well. I thought the first period, the guys went about their business very brightly. Um, good energy, good focus. Of course, there are things in our game that we want to continually reinforce and try to work on. And with the group that we had out there, we, we were able to, to still maintain some good structure and in fact made some wonderful chances, uh, predominantly through dead ball situations and Walker and, and Dave Romney had two glorious chances and the goalkeeper made world-class saves. Um, thoroughly deserved the 1-0 the, the difference at the break. And the second period was very, very different. Um, Tampa got on the front foot, made life a hell of a lot more difficult. And I have to say for a slightly younger uh, second group out on the field, they did a wonderful job to, to maintain the scoreline and uh, showed a lot of determination under some, some real intense pressure. Um, on the night, I, I would say that um, you know, Walker stood out fantastically well for me. Really, really good uh, display in that first period. But I, I think all in all, there, there were numerous players that, especially, especially given the, the circumstances that, that we've been embroiled in, um, with games called off that needed that 45 minutes and I'm sure they'll be much, much better for that as we move and, and turn the corner into uh, next week. Your thoughts on today's performance? I'm very pleased with the attitude of everyone out on the field. Um, you know, it's always a concern in these pre-season games that, you, you know, there's a bit of lethargy, there's a lot of hard work going on daily, you can leave people with heavy legs and maybe mentally a little bit flat, but you know this group showed time and time again that they're uh, they're ready for these games. We started very brightly. What could be classed as as more of a, a, a first choice group, if you like. Um, I'm just calling them Group One and Group Two, but you know we have a core of, of players that you're familiar with in that team, and I thought they started off very well. Um, showed some some good signs with and without the ball and. Goalkeeper kept them in the game with two or three excellent saves from two from dead balls. Walker and Dave Romney get themselves, you know, really good chances. But I thought we thoroughly deserved the 1 0 uh, lead at, at the break. The second period, Tampa looked like they had a, a, just a little bit more uh, energy and drive about their game. They asked a lot of questions of maybe slightly younger group. Um, the quality, choices, speed of play all came into question. And I would have to say, you know, when you're trying to tick boxes for pre-season, there's a number of things that, you know, you really want to try and, um, you know, tick off the agenda. And one of them is when you've got a lead, are you strong enough mentally and physically to, to hang on to that lead if things are not going your way? Because ultimately, you know, it is about winning games of football and, and earning points. I would love to have seen a little bit more quality out of that group, but they showed a tremendous amount of determination to see the game out. Thank you, coach. As a reminder, if you have questions for coach tonight, please alert me through the chat. In the meantime, we will um, give the floor to Tim Suliva, who has the first question for tonight. Gary, we saw, or I more accurately didn't see a number of the guys that, that we might consider your top guys, including Joe and any of your um, established striker options. Was that load management? Is that, uh, you know, dealing with minor injuries? What's kind of the status of those guys? Yeah, it's, it's a combination of many things, Tim. You know, I, I think you can encompass it in, in you know, maybe two words, pre-season and, and living in, a, you know, the world that we currently do. Um, we have some players missing for all sorts of different reasons, um, you know, international injuries, etc. And, you know, we've, we've had to adapt. It, it always offers an opportunity for other people. And tonight, you know, one in particular was, was for Elliot. You know, it might well have been a, a situation that he, he may not have seen. But tonight he's got 90 minutes under his, under his belt. Um, there'll be an awful lot that, that we can take out of it and, and discuss with him 
and he can go uh, go away and and uh, you know mentally re reflect on. Um, but ultimately, he'd be very very pleased that, especially with that second half onslaught, that he's kept a clean sheet. Great heels with the next question. Gary, how did your scheduling as far as, you know, continuing training sessions, um, getting guys back fit, instituting some of the things that you want to see this group accomplish tactically and strategically, um, when those days were, that you were supposed to play uh, those other teams, were you just adding training sessions? What was the impact of not playing those matches like for you? Well, I, th I, think, I think we all – as coaches, you have to be ready to adapt um, at the start of pre-season or probably well before that. We, we try to put a, a picture and a, a plan together that's a, a perfect world. Um, that perfect world contained two games last week and unfortunately we were unable to take part in them. We, we adapted. Of course, we still worked. Um, pre-season is not a time for rest or days off. The players realise that. We're in camp. We have great facilities here. We have great weather here. Um, you know, we, we're well looked after and, and uh, you know, we, we rest well when we're not working so that we're ready for the next bit of work. And we, we've got through an awful lot. I have to say the, the schedule that um, has been mapped out, you know, I changed slightly to last year just to try and, um, you know, create a, a better window for the players a, to physically move forward and B, to recover. And I think at this point, we can all say, other than one or two games that we've missed out on, that, that we're moving we're moving in a, a very decent direction. A reminder to please alert me through the chat if you have any questions. In the meantime, we'll continue with a follow-up question from Tim Sullivan. <laughs> Gary, obviously you've had him in training sessions uh, for the past couple of weeks here, but this was Nick Hines' first uh, semi-competitive appearance. What did you think of his action uh, against the Rowdies tonight? Well, Nick's, Nick's actually just come back from a, a tight hamstring. He, he missed a, a few sessions last week, um, has, has got himself back into the, the, the workload and the action in the last three or four days. And, and actually, I know he's played out wide, in that midfield role, but in in fairness to him, he was you know he was probably pushed further up the field due to circumstances, and I thought I thought after uh, you know uh, a period of of you know really just testing the water and getting himself into the game, I thought he grew into it. Showed some very nice individual moments. Um, he looked like he was just a bit tentative early on physically. But as the game wore on, he realised that, you know, this Tampa group were not here just for the ride. And, it, and if he wasn't going to up his uh, tenacity in the game, then it might just pass him by. And he, he did just that. I thought he finished the game off on, on a decent note. But 35 minutes for somebody who's, who's not necessarily trained uh, a, a shed load in the last week or 10 days was probably as good as it was going to get. Great deal for the next question. Gary, I know you've mentioned some of the guys that have been out um, and going back to the Louisville match, um, Jonder was, was, in a, was a part of that. But in addition to him, one guy who has been playing has been Rodrigo, who is, is still getting used to the group and he's still getting used to playing in MLS and playing with uh, new teammates in a new country. Um, is he hitting the marks? I mean, how, do you, how are you able to measure his, his progress, especially through the disruptions? And, and, and of course, uh, finally getting back on the field tonight. Did he show something tonight that's shown that? How is Rodrigo doing? Well, first things first, Rodrigo's a, a terrific lad and he's, he's very, very keen to learn. He, he's been asked to do an awful lot um, with and without the ball. It reminds me very much of the situation with, with Randall Liao last year. Um, you know, somebody who's, who's learning the language. You, you've mentioned two or three different areas that he has to contend with, and that's outside of, of the game and the training field. 
I think one of the biggest things that he's finding at the moment is the workload. And, you know, I think we all have to remember that these guys are training far harder, far longer, and doing much more work than they normally would when they're in season. You know, I'm trying to, as all coaches do, prepare them for the rigours of, of a long, tough season. And there are some days where the legs are very heavy. Um, you can't do the things that you feel you should be able to. And then, you know, you've got a coach screaming in your ear that tactically there are certain aspects you need to be a little bit sharper with. He's moving forward nicely. Is he, is he exactly where he would like to be and I would like him to be? Absolutely not. But I think, you know, we've been able to see he's a talented boy. He's got very good energy. He's got a turn of pace. Um, he's, a, he's an intelligent footballer. But there are things that he's going to have to uh, take on board to get himself, uh, you know, further down the line and, and be ready for the first team. So that, that work will continue. We'll go back to uh, the theme of Tim and Drake. So uh, we'll finish with these two questions. Uh, Tim, go ahead. Gary, obviously you have a, a couple of your key players who aren't there because they have been with their countries over the past week. Did you get a chance to watch Anibal, Randall, and uh, Alistair play? Uh, obviously, Alistair got his first international goal. What did you think of those guys? And you've, have you able to, been able to congratulate them on a job well done for their countries? Yeah, I did slightly different circumstances for all of them. I was lucky enough to watch Alistair live here. Um, they, of course, had a, a very hefty win against the Cayman Islands. But I've got to say, you know, whilst they were on top for the whole game, um, Alistair's qualities going forward, um, his crossing ability, gets himself an assist and a goal, were on show. And uh, I'm sure it will be a day you won't forget. He's, he's, I believe it was his first cap for his country and he scores. So that's wonderful for him. Um, Randall and, and uh, Annabelle, of course, we, uh, we watched on TV. Uh, and, you know, to be fair to Randall, I think there was, I, he was playing in a position for, in my eyes, that, you know, was a little bit... Um, unnatural to him but of course his coach must have felt he, he could he could fulfill that role in in that almost like a an eight role if you like in midfield um but to to finish the competition for him would have probably been um you know some mixed emotions they they don't obviously go through but he scores two goals in his last international uh, i'm sure he'd be uh you know, pleased with his efforts. And, and of course, Annabelle made his 100th cap, I believe. And, and that's an incredible milestone for, um, for any individual to play 100 times for, for your country. Um, I've, I have, in fact, tried to phone him, text him, and, and get in touch with him. Uh, he's either avoiding my calls or uh, he's enjoying himself somewhere. Uh, I'd like to think he's the second one. But we'll certainly look forward to seeing him when we get back. One final question from Dre Hill. Well, it seems like Alistair has gotten big time on you, Gary. Uh, <laughs> no, not Alistair, Annabelle. Oh, Annabelle. Well, that's... Annabelle. that's no, no, that's, Alistair's... Alistair's um, he's, he came straight from the Canadian group to us. Um, and uh, he, he will be training with a group tomorrow and uh, will be available for us for the weekend. Wonderful. Well, um, going forward, I mean, as obviously there's about a week, um, to my understanding, you guys down there, or at least a few days, less than a week, actually, um, down there in Florida. And then, of course, you still have next week to still prepare um, for the season. It, is it now more than ever a little bit more important to try and get that MLS side, um, at, as, at least for a scrimmage on April 10th, just because of where things have landed, especially – with all the, the the strikers and some of the guys who are trying to prove them way their way into the starting eleven, I will interject here, Drake. More news to come in the coming days. So um, keep, uh, keep uh, stay close to your inbox. There you go, Drake. I, I, well, I, maybe I, maybe not the news, Gary. But how about some of the guys who you're hoping to see? Uh, whoever you guys play, if you guys play someone. Yeah. Look, we you know we want to be ready. 
Um, we, we want to be as prepared as possible, of course. I, I do think, um, as, as we all would have loved to, you know, I certainly would have loved to have been standing here without a mask on. Um, we live in a world at the moment that is just not straightforward. And, you know, I think that's affected an awful lot of teams in the way that they can go about their preparations and competition. You know, teams are looking for shorter journeys and, and less less complication. And, and that has meant that, you know, we're, we're probably playing against opponents that we may not have done in the past. But I, I do honestly think that as long as the guys can get good competition, tonight has been good competition. There are, there are very challenging USL side Tampa. Um, Neil Collins has, has done a wonderful job with that group and they're always ultra competitive. Likewise, the Louisville game. I mean, if you think of those two teams, you know, they're, I would say they're the very best of USL. Um, it doesn't, you know, you can't get much closer to MLS than that. And if that's the route we have to take, I'm sure the guys, when the 17th comes round, will be ready for the challenge. Thank you, everybody. We look forward to seeing hopefully soon. Have a good night.